Hello, my name is Michelle McGowan, and this is a brief, just small tutorial on how to check the Medicare IVR for Florida. It's very similar from state to state, but I'm in Florida, so I have the number for Florida. Um, what the IVR is, the interactive voice response for Medicare, it's a really useful tool um, that lots of doctors don't use and don't even know how to use, and a lot of times it's just, we're lazy, we have other people doing lots of stuff for us, but um, I really think that doctors should know how to check this. If your billing company leaves, if your billing person leaves, you want to know where you stand. Um, you want to make sure they were doing the billing right, especially if they left quickly. If you work for a group, you want to make sure your group is billing what you um, have billed out. And if you're, if you're a private practice, it's really smart, even if you have a billing company. If you own your own practice, it's smart to know what you're billing out and um, knowing what's pending on the Medicare floor plan is a way to guide or gauge if claims you think are going out in normal everyday business are actually going out. So who should check the IVR? Of course, your billing people should be checking the IVR because they should be making sure your claims are getting paid. But um, I think doctors should definitely know how to check the IVR you um, want to know and you want to make sure that your billing company isn't dropping the ball somewhere and um, it really does is a great way to let you know you're actually getting paid for the services you're getting paid for this is not something I think doctors need to add to their everyday list of responsibilities however um, you know if you if you have a, your office staff at least checking the um, pending payments on the floor plan and normally you have about seven thousand or eight thousand dollars pending on the floor plan and it goes down to a thousand I mean for my office staff my staff every day checks the pending for Medicare because we're in Florida we see a lot of Medicare patients we want to make sure if we normally have ten thousand dollars pending that there's somewhere from eight to ten thousand dollars in there once it drops under eight thousand dollars I have my um, billing people do a Medicare report and make sure that a batch of claims didn't go bad and nobody knew. Um, how to check the IVR? It's simple in the sense that there's a phone number. Um, the phone number is the 1-877-847-4992 for um, the Florida IVR. And this is the number you're called to check the IVR. Um, just that is the easiest process is dialing it the first couple of times you do it. After that, it gets a little convoluted. Um, in order to check the IVR, you need your NPI number. That's your national provider ID number, which that's a number you should have. If you don't have it, actually, you can just look it up online. It's amazing how much information is out there for the world to see about doctors. Um, your PTAN number. Your PTAN is your, you it used to be a unique identifier, but now your PTAN number is a number that's given to you by Medicare. I'll tell you how to look that up if you don't know. And you need the last five digits of the um tax ID number in which you or the group you work for bills under and of course you're going to need your patient's information your patient's information should be easy it's all in your medical record it's in your electronic medical record if you're a doctor and you work for somebody you just look under insurance you'll see their primary insurance is Medicare what you're going to do is you're going to need the first six digits of the last name and the first initial and those letters are going to have to be translated into numbers. It is a pain in the you know what because each letter, like A is star nine two. So when you're entering a letter that's a, a last name, if the last name was AAA, it would be star nine two, star nine two, star nine two. Um, but there's a really easy converter tool which I've added here for you to see. Um, the NPI number, like I said, even if you don't know your NPI number, I know I used to know my MPI number by heart and now every time I just Google it. But there's an MPI search directory for um, online. And if you just Google MPI Finder, you'll find it. That's that's the easiest number to get a hold of if you work for somebody. Your MPI is the easiest thing you find you can find. Your PTAN, your PTAN, if you're in private practice, you probably know your PTAN. If you don't know your PTAN, you can go onto the PCOS website and get your PTAN. Um, if you work for some time, someone and you don't even have your enrollment and how to get on to that PICO site, then just ask your provider, your, your practice. They should give you that information. If they don't give you that information, 
that could be a red flag that something's not right. You do need the last five digits of the tax ID number. If you're in business for yourself, of course you already have your tax ID number. If you're not in business for yourself and you work for a group, um, this is also something that your employer should freely give to you because you should be able to check your Medicare claims. If not, you can Google it, but sometimes um, if you work for a practice, they may have a couple different tax ID numbers and um, you wanna make sure that you want, to, you want it to be as easy as possible for you. What you're gonna need from the patient is you're gonna need the first digits of the last patient, first six digits of the patient's last name and the first initial, and you need to met, use their Medicare number. Again, all of that should be on your billing, or, or on your EMR under demographics and insurance and billing. <clears throat> Um, when you're checking specifically patient claims, you want to make sure you have the dates of service that you build for and you want to know what you build for, like an E&M service of a 99203. The confusing part for um, this whole thing and this whole process is just translating letters. But if you're a doctor listening to this, you're a doctor. Like, this is pretty easy stuff. You just dump it into a little converter that um, CMS has for you and, and you can find that out. It's really not that hard. I've included here the website. Um, you can copy and paste it. It's from Palmetto GBA, but it gives you a PTAN converter. It gives you a Medicare converter so you can find your PTAN because lots of times if you don't know your PTAN, you know your PTAN is going to be two letters, couple numbers, and another letter. So if you put the whole entire PTAN in the PTAN converter here, it'll convert it into all numbers. Even if you put your other numbers in it, it's just all gonna stay numbers, which is numbers, but it's gonna convert the letters into numbers. Um, then you're gonna need the Medicare number. Well, the Medicare number is all you know, numbers in one letter, but just put the whole thing and it'll convert it. The number that's gonna be the conversion, again, patients' Medicare number is like 1887897, whatever, and then it's star 93 for the A, or star 92 for the A. And then the patient's name. This tool that's on that website I just provided is really great. It, you can just put everything in. I usually have this split screen and I'll have the patient's information on, you know, I'll have my electric medical record on one side, I'll have the Medicare IVR open on my phone, on speakerphone, and then I'll type in this information as I'm going from patient to patient. I just try to keep it as streamlined and easy as possible. Um, order of checking a claim. So you've seen a patient and, you know, seven weeks later, you see the patient comes into the office again and you notice that their the insurance balance is still out. Well, Medicare usually pays claims within two weeks. So if they still have a $250 claim out from the first time you saw them and it's been over six weeks, there's probably something wrong with that claim. That's always a great way for a practitioner to like balance check your billing company because you get so busy seeing patients. But just looking at that little thing that you know, spits out on your super bill or encounter form and you notice you haven't gotten paid for it, well, that's a, that's a great way. So then you could just take that and either you can have your staff check it or you can simply follow the instructions. It's something you should do quarterly every once in a while just to keep your brain knowing how to do it in case everybody quits on you. Um, but you just call the Medicare number, you'll listen to the menu, and once you've gotten to the main through the main menu, you're plus two to check a claim. Um, it'll ask you for your MPI number. You'll enter your MPI number. That's easy one because it's all numbers. It'll ask you for your last five digits of your tax ID. Your PTAN, you should have already converted in that little PTAN converter from Palmetto. And then um, you'll enter the last six digits, or I'm sorry, the first six digits of the last name and the first initial it'll ask you for. And again, that's that's the biggest pain in the butt part, and that's why that translator is so good because you, you put star nine two, star five seven, whatever. You don't have to think about it. You've already translated it. It's right there on the screen for you. Um, and then the dates of service. So that's why it's, it's easier to do this with the software and having the software open, um, it's much more HIPAA compliant. Um, if you had to write it all down, you just have to make sure you know you're destroying that the way you're supposed to in a HIPAA compliant way. Um, but yeah, you need the dates of services and what you billed for, and then Medicare will tell you if it was billed because sometimes you think you clicked it and it didn't go through, and maybe that's why it wasn't billed. Uh, maybe a bad batch, um, you're. It got stuck in the 
gateway or whatever and so you're it's hanging out there in purgatory and if you didn't catch it it'd still be out there i mean we get we're getting less and less every year from insurance companies so we'll make sure that we we check this information but that's it you know it's just a quick short sweet tutorial on how to check the claims of medicare again i think this is probably the most useful tool right here which is just having your PTAN, the Medicare number, and the patient's name all just translate it. You just go to the little thing and hit translate for each one of these. You know, you have a split screen open and you have your um, billing software open as well. It's just the easiest way to do it. Um, I hope that was helpful and um, that's it.